Atlantic Coast no more. News out of the ACC has some calling it the All Coast Conference. So it's no big secret. Conference realignment has jumped the shark and did so probably a pretty long time ago. But this is the worst it's ever been and it's hard to imagine that it will get worse, although it almost certainly will, right? Uh, the Big Ten has schools in California in it. That's weird, but there's also 20 schools in the Big Ten. Makes you wonder which 10 are the big ones. The ACC has Stanford and California in the conference. Atlantic Coast Conference has California schools. So you didn't click on this video to learn about that though. You clicked on this because we are using AI to fix conference realignment. So what's important in conference realignment? It depends on who you ask, but no matter who you do ask, if they know what they're talking about, the phrase they're going to use is institutional fit. Institutional fit sounds really great, but it actually only means a couple of things, namely the academics, athletics, and market size of the possible member institution uh, school. And the cynic in me wants to tell you that market size seems to be the biggest deal nowadays. Um, certainly, the Big Ten going to Los Angeles kind of suggests that, although obviously from an academic standpoint, two very good schools. So what we have to do, knowing that there's these three points that tend to dictate conference realignment, is use this and determine basically what every school in FBS ranks at in these respective ideas and then find a way to make it into a data point. From there, we can get AI, artificial intelligence, to kind of make the best picks. And I say picks because it's a draft format. We're gonna make four power leagues, 16 teams each, one mid-major league, and then the group of five. And again, like I said, 16 teams for the power leagues. I just happen to like that. And 12 teams for the mid-major league. I like that too, and it kind of, keeps a next step without overly bloating it, which I tend to think is pretty important. You could do this with any number though, um, and you don't even have to use the same numbers necessarily. I, I think college football is at its best when it's pretty chaotic, but this is just the way I decided to go. 64 seems to be a pretty important number throughout college sports, uh, so it felt like the right number for a group of power schools. So basically, the procedure is this. I've written a program uh, that takes the ideas of academics, of athletic success, and of market size. Popularity is the nomenclature I use because it's not always about your home market. A school like Michigan, you know, obviously has a large chunk of Michigan, uh, but also, you know, there's a large Michigan fan base in New York City. You can say the same thing about Notre Dame. Uh, so it's kind of about how many TV sets or streaming devices nowadays you're going to get with this school. Um, academically, we use ratings that are available. Uh, who knows how accurate <laughs> really the academic rating is of a school, but that's what we go with. In athletics, we focus heavily on football. Um, but you know, you allow for this to be a little bit of men's basketball too. Uh, I mean, no one's ever made a conference realignment decision based on volleyball, right? So that's not included here. But by doing this, uh, you can see that the scores uh, for, if we look at Air Force here, it's going to actually change based on who's drafting or when it happens to the draft. Appalachian State, we just saw there, went to a nine for one conference and then back up to an 11. Uh, so it is dynamic, it does change, and you can see that there is a little comment next to Conference C there, gentle. Um, it's not that the commissioner is gentle uh, to use the personality types um, just as a shorthand. Use the nature names in Pokemon. All right, so this is how we kind of just determine randomly. Um, each conference is randomly assigned one of these personality types, just what they value and what their strategy therefore will be while drafting. Um, and this example is actually a pretty interesting one because conference B in a little bit here is going to go outside of the power five pretty significantly. Um, they actually draft Army, Navy, and Air Force in just a little bit. Uh, so obviously there's some TV 
appeal there with them, but more than anything else, there's strong academics. Uh, and then there is some bonus given for rivalries, at least in the right context, um, using, I guess, the Southwestern Conference as an example. That can't happen in a simulation just because there is always going to be a penalty from drafting too many teams uh, in the same state. I guess by the same token, the MAC probably couldn't happen um, with this simulation either. So by making scores for the academics, the athletics, and the popularity, accounting for rivals, region, state, um, and then just kind of personality or strategy for each conference commissioner drafting, we do get different outcomes every time, but we get pretty interesting leagues, particularly in the power conference leagues. Um, some things make more sense than others. Geography is not the strongest consideration anymore, but it uses all those things to make sure we get interesting conferences in fixed conference realignment, hopefully. So we've got Notre Dame, Georgia, Alabama, Auburn, Clemson, Georgia Tech, South Carolina. And they move a little bit. Iowa, Nebraska, Colorado, Indiana, Iowa State, Stanford. Was your school picked? California, Duke, and then Wake Forest, kind of the only surprising one here. Uh, they don't usually make it into a power league. USC, North Carolina, Florida State, Penn State, Oregon, Washington, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Maryland, NC State, Rutgers, Virginia, Virginia Tech, Army, Navy, and Air Force. I've never seen like a composition quite like that before, so pretty cool. Um, but definitely an interesting league. Then you have Michigan, Ohio State, Florida, UCLA, LSU, Michigan State, Miami, Tulane, Utah, BYU, Northwestern, Illinois, Boise State, Cincinnati, Arizona State, and Arizona. And that kind of tells us why Boise State was picked, by the way. And then Texas, Oklahoma, Texas A&M, Arkansas, TCU. But then they get out of the Southwest, go to Tennessee, Mississippi, Kentucky, UCF. Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma State, Kansas State, Vanderbilt, Syracuse, and Pitt. They decide to have like a little northeastern corner at the very end there. Um, but that's kind of 64 teams just picked by this sort of AI example. Now we're on to the mid-major league, I call it, um, where it's just kind of that point between the power conferences and the group of five, sort of what, you know, the American purported to be but with only 64 teams it does carry a little bit more of weight to it um interesting that you get a school like umass in there but depending on the personality type they may value that rivalry in quotes here with boston college they may very well value the academics of umass which are stellar so that's kind of what's happening here and then you can see the group of five all draft just like the four power conferences did previously. But that's really it. Um, that's what I use to determine or to draft these power conferences and just kind of giving these different personalities all the information they need to make the best decisions and again, hopefully, use it to fix college football.